Hey, it's Silver Dollar. Ah, I know it's been a while since you've heard that, and I just wanted to check in on things, make sure that DECA hasn't killed the game like Kabam did in my day. And I gotta say, Exalt and all this new content is looking pretty, pretty good. You guys are lucky. So, But uh, like most old YouTubers, I'm hanging out in Canada learning Fortnite dances for TikTok. So, you know, things are pretty good. And now that we're all caught up, let me welcome you to the Chief Basic Guide. Now, you may be wondering, why a guide on Basa over any of the other mini-bosses? While Basa is not a super difficult boss to complete by just running away, people tend to just run around the boss room without any need to understand the actual phases. And this is why Basa is typically the slowest, most tedious, and least appreciated mini-boss. So today, Rather than making a guide to help you survive, instead, we will prepare you to thrive. Despite how long this fight feels, Besa actually has less than half the health of both Dama and Luke Orcs. So by understanding how this fight works, Besa can actually be completed on pace with every other mini-boss. To start, Let's break this guide into three main parts. The first is core mechanics. The second is the main sections of the fight. And third is individual phases. So let's start with core mechanics. Despite feeling the effects of being silenced throughout the fight, people fail to realize the green banners are what cause this. Whenever you are within the five tile radius of the banner, you are temporarily silenced until you exit. But whenever enemies enter the radius of the banners, they instead receive a buff. So whenever you are navigating the platform, be aware of this so you are not caught off guard when you suddenly cannot use your ability. The next core mechanic is staggers. During a particular phase, if you do enough damage, Besa will stagger very similar to how O3 does. This is a fantastic time to go in for a few seconds of completely uncontested damage. After the stagger is complete, Besa will stand back up and swing his axe. This swing will send a large green banner to the center of the room. This silences the whole room for 15 seconds. So be wary during this time as the group heals and evasive abilities cannot be used. It's a good idea to spam buffing abilities as soon as you see the swing and this will allow you to have some buffs carry into that 15 seconds. This covers the core mechanics, so now we can talk about stages of the fight. A lot of you probably recognize that the phases change as you get further through the fight, but a lot of people don't really understand how they change. The fight can simply be broken into three sections with three phases each. Each section of the fight begins with Besa circling exactly how he does at the beginning of the fight, followed by a chase phase. The best indicator that he is about to move to the next stage of the fight is by a mechanic called damage capping. In each section of the fight, a certain amount of damage is required to push him. So once that damage threshold is met, rather than instantly circling the middle, he will complete whatever phase he is in. But he's completely invulnerable. When you see this, you know you are very close to him circling and spawning more minions. Every section of the fight introduces a new minion type, starting with Brutes, followed by Falconers, and finally Assassins. Okay, but this is starting to get into some of the specifics, which is not necessarily my forte, so I'm going to leave the phases part to TS. Thank you so much for your help, Silver. It was a pleasure hearing that intro again and having you help with this video. But with that said, let's move straight into the phases. Let's bring up that timeline that I brought up earlier, which shows all of these sections of the fight as well as transition phases. To start, let's talk about transition phases. As you can see on screen, we have three sections of the fight, which are all started by two transition phases each. As touched on earlier, Vesa will circle the middle of the room in which he spawns a new wave of minions each time. After circling comes a chase phase. Once you do enough damage during the chase phase, he then enters the main sections of his fight. The best way to do these transition phases is by quickly grouping up top right or at the nearest corner after he finishes circling mid. This is because Besa does not move directly at the nearest player, but rather wants to run alongside them at about a two tile radius. 
This makes dragging him very difficult because rather than chasing directly at the player, he wants to move around them. But by grouping up all at one spot, Basil will get slingshotted to the outside of the platform. On screen now, you can see a motion graphic explaining kind of what I'm talking about. Once Besa is slingshotted to the outside, the group will then spread out and create a wall. And since he wants to travel alongside the nearest player rather than directly at them, he's essentially going to be trapped along the outside of the arena. And because he's trapped on the outside, his movement is going to be very linear and very easy to hit with any range above a sword. And this transition phase alone is one of the key reasons I actually decided to make this video because by doing these transition phases correctly, you can probably save an average of about two minutes per run every time you get Besa. As mentioned before, every time he repeats a transition phase, he will spawn a new wave of minions, but that is honestly not a too big of a deal, especially if you have mystics who are able to stasis, as well as knights who can stun said minions. So, once he's pushed out of his chase phase, he will begin the main sections of his fight. Section 1 has only two phases, which are both very simple and easy. The first one is indicated by Basa saying Spineless Runts in chat. Spineless Runts is a very simple and slow chase phase, which is very easy to stagger. Basa will slowly move towards the nearest player, so by grouping up and slowly dragging Basa around the room, it is easy to do loads of damage. The other phase is indicated by Basa saying My forces are infinite in chat, where he will then slowly zigzag to the right side of the room, and then back to the left. His movement is in a set pattern here, so damaging him is very easy, as his movement is very predictable. On screen now, you can actually see the blue shield over his head, meaning he cannot be damaged. This means the group did enough damage to push him to the next section of his fight, and as we covered earlier, is the aforementioned damage cap. He will then become damageable again once he returns to the middle to do his transition phases. While doing his second set of transition phases, while rotating mid, he will spawn his second set of minions. These are the falconeers who, on top of shooting damaging shots, will also be spawning the sacred bird, which will continue to spawn throughout section 2 and 3. So, let's talk about when you're going to encounter the sacred bird, as well as section 2 and 3 as a whole. The first phase we are going to cover in section 2 is keep them covered. In this phase, Besa will rotate counterclockwise in a figure 8 type pattern around mid. When you understand this, dodging and damaging is actually quite easy. By standing on the right or left side, you have a great opportunity to shoot as he slowly passes by. The scary part of keep them covered though is the bird. More properly, called the falcon. The minions following Besa will throw falcons at the nearest player, which then explode after flashing red. This explosion can easily insta-pop any character, so be extremely cautious while maneuvering during this phase. If you're a mystic, try to keep the minions stasis as much as possible, and if you're a trickster, decoy middle as much as possible. If you're not silenced, by decoying middle, the falcons will instead be thrown at the decoy mid, significantly decreasing the birds that can kill players on the outside edge. This decoy strategy does not apply to other phases though, so be careful. Next up is dodge parry. Dodge parry is the best phase for damage as Besa slowly rotates in a weird S-shaped pattern. Melees can push in for damage and ranges can have an absolute field day just shooting them from distance. This is the easiest section 2 phase to stagger, so get ready to push in. Do still be wary of falcons though, because rather than following Besa, the falconeers will rotate along the outside of the room, throwing their falcons inward, so be careful backing up towards the outside of the room, and make sure you watch your minimaps. If tricksters throw their decoys outside of the actual platform, the falconeers will instead throw the birds outside of the playable arena, meaning that tricksters can still be extremely useful during this phase, but this is something that is not common practice, and if you watch this video and you do it as a trickster, just know you'll probably save a few lives. Your best bet though is to just have a mystic stasis as much as possible. The last phase during section 2 is the hardest to get damage on, so I won't spend a whole lot of time on it. But hey, at least the falcons don't spawn during this one. During disrupt the opponent's movement, Basa will chase the nearest player in a very, very erratic and hard to predict pattern, and minions will also be crossing both horizontally and vertically across the arena. 
The phase is pretty much a wash and it is not viable to do any real substantial damage, so just focus on dodging and preparing to push in on the next phase. The transition into section 3 is marked by basis saying Assassin's Formations, which is his transition and a rotation. During this phase though, he will spawn his third and final set of minions, which are the Assassins, which shoot green slowing shurikens, which will be a top priority for you to dodge throughout the rest of the fight. Getting hit by one of these slowing shurikens in the wrong situation can mean certain death. Just like section 2, all of these phases occur in a random order. The first of which we are going to look over is Flank Them, which has the iconic large red sword shots, and despite these shots looking really scary, it is actually a great damage phase. As long as you avoid the green shurikens, it is really easy to keep your distance and get damage on the slow moving Besa. Be aware though, once again, Falcons are going to be spawning during this phase. Do not decoy during this phase as the falconers are moving throughout the room and decoying could clog a bunch of birds in the only available space to move. Once again, mystics do your best to stasis at all times, especially during this third section. Moving on though, the worst phase for damage in section 3 is strike through. And this one is actually not as bad as people typically think. Basa will travel from corner to corner in an hourglass type pattern that is in fact very easy to predict. So let's think of the arena as top and bottom half. When Besa is traveling during this phase, it is always in a set pattern, and it is easy to think about it like this. If Besa goes to a corner on the right side, he will stay on either the top or bottom and go to the left. If Besa goes to the left side, then he will cross all the way through the map. An easy memory trick for this is right goes left and left goes through. So by positioning yourself where Besa is going to be, you can get a solid amount of damage as he comes to you. This knowledge of where he's going to go can also work for dodging. If you're not very comfortable during this phase, then knowing where he's going to be going helps you navigate away from him a lot easier. And last but not least, the phase you're most likely to finish the fight on, Control the Outside. Control the Outside is the best damage phase during Section 3. As soon as the phase begins, Besa will travel in a straight line towards the outer edge of the arena and then begin to slowly rotate counterclockwise. This is a fantastic damage phase for all classes because even melees can get in close enough to do consistent damage. Be careful though as once again falcons will spawn during this phase. The most important thing in this phase is to avoid the green shurikens. Getting slowed while rotating along the outside is extremely scary, and if you're not on a melee, you should just nexus because you will die. But if you push in with the group and focus fire, it is extremely easy to stagger this phase and do tons of damage. And this is exactly why I said it is the phase you're most likely to finish the fight off on. If you've done any damage during the phases before, you're extremely likely to just finish them off after a stagger. And with that being said, you've made it through the fight and finished this guide. I was planning on going over the items within the set that Besa drops, but someone else has already done that with two of the more interesting items, and that is Nox Novus, who did not ask for a shout out and is not expecting one, but I simply know he makes great item review guides, so if you are interested in checking out some of the items within the Besa set, go check out the description and the links will be there. With that said though, a huge thank you to Silver Dollar for helping me out with this video. It was truly a pleasure to work with you, and I think a lot of the viewers will agree with me when I say it was super refreshing to have your voice in a video once again. My pleasure, been fun working on it, and appreciate you giving me a little tour of Realm Exalt and you know, showing me all the new stuff. So hopefully I can uh, call on you soon to carry me through 03. S-L-V-R-D-L-L-R. T S P A G E <laughs> Bird is the word. Sacred bird.